Welcome back to Unleash Success. This is your host, Corey Porpodian. Guys, a quick update on the podcast. We're going to be releasing episodes every Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays now. On Mondays, we're still going to do the Mental Mondays to create a mental shift to help you become more successful during the week. Wednesdays, we'll be interviewing people just like we have been for the last two plus years. You know, people have built million or even billion dollar businesses. And then on Fridays, a new series that I'm introducing called Everyday Entrepreneurs. This is to break down the secrets of people that are in the in the dirt. You know, they're they're working on their strategies of success. They're trying things today to show you what it takes to make a thousand dollars more a month, or maybe even ten thousand dollars more a month, and leave your day job. If you are interested in building a business, if you want to grow a new business that you just started, I created a free guide. Go to unleashsuccess.com slash startup. It's a free guide compiling all the best advice that I got from the last two years of interviewing successful entrepreneurs on the podcast. So if you want to start a business or grow your new business, go to unleashsuccess.com slash startup and the link will be in the show notes. to the Unleash Success Podcast, where we break down the secrets of success to give you real tools and strategies that get real results. And now, here's your host, Corey Korpodian. Welcome back to Unleash Success. This is your host, Corey Korpodian. Today, guys, I am super honored to be interviewing a longtime listener of Unleash Success Podcast, Allie Wester. She's been listening to this podcast for almost two years now. And, you know, we've stayed in constant communication as she's built her business and gone through some challenging life events, but has still pursued and been successful. And now she's on this podcast. Allie is a professional wedding planner and event planner for over 20 years, planning major events at concert venues, live after five, and even Miss USA parties, which is super cool. Um, she's done over 900 weddings. In 2004, she started a school for teaching and training people how to start their own wedding and event planning business, and she's inspired over 1,200 people. Allie is an amazing person, um, and... I'm so excited that she's on the show and going to share her secrets for success today. Allie, thanks for coming on. Oh my gosh, Corey, it's such an honor and I'm so excited. I'm humbled, but I'm super excited. I love it. I, I when, you, when, you, when I put it out to interview you and I was just really excited because you're someone who I know we've talked a lot about and you've gone through some yeah. trials and tribulations um, in your personal life with, with your voice that we've talked about right before we got on here. Yes. Um, and you, you kind of had a moment where you had a, to figure out what you were going to do with your business. And as an event planner, you're always talking. So- Absolutely. To share with us what, what was going on exactly and how you overcame that. Um, well, about two years ago, I was diagnosed with a paralyzed vocal cord. And it apparently was from a virus, which prior to that, I'd never heard of that before. And all of a sudden, I had that little bit of a panic mode and thinking, how is this going to affect me? How is this going to affect my family? How will it affect my career, the people who rely on me for work because I have a team, you know, and I immediately went into, okay, let's see what we can do. So I actually reached out to the business mastery page from Tony Robbins and you had reached out to me because I said, okay, y'all, I need some help. Has anybody gone through a physical Uh, challenge and overcame it. And then you reached out to me and said, you know, I might have a couple podcasts that could help you. And I immediately went, it's the the woman who had the autoimmune disease. Mm -hmm. And it totally inspired me, fired me up, put me at ease. And then Corey, I got the fire under my butt and started finishing my book. And I'm like, darn it. If I can't talk, I can definitely write. Right. So let me get my book done. And sure enough, my book finally got finished. Congratulations. You know, and it's Thank Yeah, you. it's funny because people always go, you know, if I if I can't do one thing, 
And, and I believe you're referencing Alexa Carlin. You know, I've interviewed people with different, yeah, yes. different physical challenges. Yes. Is there another way I can do it? So even though maybe you can't speak as well as you used to, and I'm glad you can speak on this podcast and you're, you know, Me too. It, but you're able to find a way to get your message and your purpose out there. And congratulations on finishing yes. the book. Thank you so much. You know, I look at, um, there is a double amputee a gentleman named Nick. Um, I can't pronounce his last name. It's like, Vujicic oh, yeah. or something. Yeah. He, has, he has no arms, no legs. And I saw him at a peak performance seminar with Tony Robbins. And I thought to myself, oh my gosh, his, he could be, he could use those excuses. I don't have arms. I don't have legs. He has all these limitations, quote unquote. And I'm thinking to myself, I could still communicate. I have no excuse. I have no excuse whatsoever. And I thought, there's still a way to get my message out there. And I could still work. And I could still talk. And, you know, when I do weddings, I when I communicate to the bands, I just hold up signs like cake cutting, you know, toasting, uh, garden bouquet toss. Just hold up the sign. And they love it. That's so perfect. <laughs> so, yeah, I was going to ask, yeah. too, you know, what has been your secret for, for growth. You know, you started your own wedding and event planning business. Um, and then you decided to teach, you know, a couple of people like what you've been doing over the last 20 years of your career, but you sure. went from, you know, getting that one or second student, which sometimes can be difficult, but you went from one to two to 1200. How have you been able to do that? Yes. Well, I'll tell you, I'm going to go way back. Um, 1996, I uh, found myself in a bad, toxic marriage, mm -hmm. and um, unfortunately, we divorced. I had two small children. My son was two. My daughter was four. And I found myself at a crossroads because I had a love for weddings, and but I was like, that's not really realistic. Probably have to go back to the nine-to-five job. And I found myself kind of going around at a beat up Toyota Tercel. And I was like, you know, my dream really is to do weddings. And so I was driving around, putting my application in to communication companies. And all of a sudden I passed a bridal shop and I thought to myself, wait a minute, what if, and you know, there's that moment where you make that split second decision that can shape the whole destiny of your life. And I said, you know what? I'm going to go for it. I was scared to death, walked into that bridal shop and said, listen, I do weddings. I do calligraphy. I sell invitations. And I said, if you hire me now, I will split my profits with you 50-50 from now until a year. She goes, you're hired. And I did 35 weddings that year. Wow. And I, I haven't shocked myself. Yeah. So from the weddings evolved producing bridal shows. Then all of a sudden, you might be too young to remember this, but do you remember the movie The Wedding Planner with Jay? Oh Lowe? yeah. Jennifer Definitely. Okay. So this movie comes I love that out. Movie, actually. Right? <laughs> I've seen it many oh, times. Listen. Oh, I love her. Yeah, you know? she's great. And listen, I also my also my yeah. secret secret uh, little secret here for everybody listening. J Lo is one of my celebrity crushes. So if anybody knows J Lo, wants to introduce me, just so I can get a picture. I do have a loving girlfriend, but <laughs> she's my one. You All know. right, anything. <laughs> yeah, anything's possible. She might be listening, <laughs> so I have to thank her profusely because it was that movie that immediately kind of. Well, here's what happened. I'm in Baton Rouge. Baton Rouge has LSU, Southern University, and Southeastern. We're a college town, okay? So this movie comes out. All of a sudden, I'm getting phone calls from girls saying, I want to be a wedding planner. Wow. Thank you, J-Lo. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'm like, wow, what do I do with this? Well, I actually took on two young girls and we did this big wedding. The bride and groom were from New York. And the, um, the wedding was in New Orleans. 
huge wedding, $200,000 wedding. Wow. Lots of stuff going on, lots of moving parts. So it was then, though, when I realized that I had to take them through a training process. Because Corey, both of them were in tears. They were freaked out. They didn't know what they were. Even though I was telling them and walking them through the process, they freaked out because weddings are highly emotionally charged. They're full of um, emotion, lots of moving parts, um, and it's very intense, very stressful. And I realized at that point, oh my gosh, maybe I ought to start a training program to teach people how to do this and walk them through the steps. So my course um, teaches them how to be emotionally prepared, mentally prepared, um, prepare for the stresses, the troubleshooting, the problems that can come up. And so from there, I do two sessions a year. I started with like six students a session. Now they're like 25 students a session. So I teach like about 50 to 70 a year. That's incredible. And and how long would you start that? That was back in 2004. 2004. So, I mean, this is before really like the online entrepreneurship. I'm going to build an online course type of mentality uh, yes. came about. So, I mean, you were really innovative in the sense of teaching people and taking all your experiences through that. Um, what What is it for you that with, with all that management, moving parts, I mean, $200,000 from a wedding, obviously there's a lot going on, but what are some secrets that you use, you use to manage your time and your own emotions in that environment? Um, in that in, in that environment, well, first of all, I'm kind of a adrenaline junkie, so I kind of feel like doing a wedding is like jumping off a cliff <laughs> every weekend. So, but is that for that the bride moment, or groom? I, get, I was just thinking. <laughs> oh, it's for everybody involved. <laughs> It's for everybody. Um, but I get very calm in chaos. That's just a gift that I have. And which, by the way, about the school, and this is just a side note, I really feel our purpose in life is to give what we've learned and our talents and our knowledge and give it away. So I do believe in giving all of that knowledge away. But as far as the weddings, the chaos, um, there could be so many things that happen in the meantime. Uh, I just kind of center myself and take care of one problem at a time. And we are really more like, wedding planners are more like MacGyvers and troubleshooters. You know, it's, oh gosh, the, the caterer didn't show up. The dress is ripped. A bridesmaid got grease on her on her dress the flower girl fell her nose is bleeding she has blood all over her dress so it's you know a lot of moving parts so you take care of the the priorities first and there i guess maybe it comes with experience but 20 years of doing this i kind of know how to prioritize problems you know like well we could wait for the caterer right now let's concentrate on getting her down the aisle mm-hmm that sort of thing. Right. You know, yeah. it's so funny. I mean, like we're talking about wedding planning and events, but what you just said reminds me of um, the book on leadership by Jocko Wilnick, where they literally the Marines, I mean, like, or like Navy SEALs, like in the military, that's the same type of mentality that they do. They're, they're, they're faced right. with all these problems. Okay, uh, is that going to kill me right now? No. Okay, move on to the thing that is absolutely urgent, <laughs> and then tackle that. Yes. And like literally, they're like one step at a time. Because if you try to tackle too many things at once, you're overwhelmed and you're immobilized. And then you know, in 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 the Marines and in Navy SEALs, like that actually could kill you. In a wedding, you know, right. you, <laughs> if if the flower girl's dress is full of blood, it might not make for a great picture. And so, like, yeah. you can worry about other stuff. But I just, I was, as you're saying that, I mean, it sounded exactly like (laughs) what they described in the book. So um, that was just an amazing tip because it it doesn't matter what business you're in, but that's the mentality that you have to have. So I really appreciate that. Um, 
sure. with with uh, launching the book. So the book is called "The Secret Confessions of a Wedding Planner." Um, is this yes. is this kind of like a uh, uh, a passion project for you? Like, what exactly motivated you to write this book? Well, it's actually a guide for brides with funny, spicy stories on the side. I'm all about education, you know, educating people about their wedding, educating people how to start a wedding business. So this is to educate the bride because, I mean, in essence, they're supposed to only get one shot at this, right? So it's one day and they plan for a year and a half. So a lot of brides go into this, into the, into the wedding, they're blind and they're like, they've been to weddings, but they weren't actually the bride. So it's a totally different concept. Um, so it takes them through each, uh, section of the wedding from hair and makeup to choosing vendors, to the ceremony, to the reception, to post reception and steps on what they should do what they need to think about, what should they know, what should they expect. And then just as a sidekick, I put funny stories on the side. Yeah, that's great. I mean, it, it yeah. always it's great to educate people, but if you can entertain them and educate them, it's definitely yeah. better. Um, so yeah. th- one of the things that I love about what you're doing is you had the business as a wedding planner, you started teaching other people, and now you're writing a book for brides. I, I wasn't, I didn't know that was just for brides, so I love that. But you have these multiple yeah. streams of income, and and that's what it takes to be a a true entrepreneur. Um, you know, always kind of going after these ideas. But you found it in your passion, and one thing a lot of people always think is like, I don't know how to find out what I want to do. I don't know what is the right thing for me to do or where I should start with starting all these different things. Like. W- what would you say to them if if they were looking to do something? I mean, wedding planning, it's not like people necessarily, you just jumped into a, a shop and were able to get 35 weddings and start a business. So what do you tell people when they're, they're asking these questions about purpose in life and passion? Sure. Well, I loved weddings. And prior to that, I was helping people do their weddings for free. So that's the key. Find something you love to do so much that you would do it for free. And the fact that you're getting paid for it is like icing on the cake, right? I tell my kids this all the time. You know, if you love ditch digging, do it with your whole heart and soul (laughs) and you'll never work a day in your life, you know? So it's like you're on vacation and I feel like I'm, I'm playing. So I tell people, what is it that you're so passionate about and that you love to do and that you get so engrossed in that you're, you know, there is no time concept. It gives you energy. You love it. You could do it all day and night and then figure out a way to make a, a living doing it. The, that's the most amazing thing in life is to find something you love. And when you love something, you're good at it, right? Mm-hmm. So when you're good at it, people are naturally gravitated towards you. So it's just this beautiful circle of loving what you do, adding value, serving people, doing what you love, and then in getting paid for it. It's fantastic. Yeah, you know, it's uh, you remind me of, um, I think it was a $100 startup book uh, recently where what you love to do and the value that you add people and what will, people are willing to pay for almost creates this Venn diagram of exactly what business you should be in. Yes. Um, so <clears throat> taking a biz, starting a business is, you know, one step, but the next step is then growing a business and, and, and getting more people. And while, you know, 50 to 70 students a year, you know, might not sound like a lot, but you're, you're training them to be complete wedding planners. So these are probably like the bigger ticket items. And that's a lot of, a lot of training. I mean, people, you know, could go to a actual school probably to do this and that's what you do for them. Um, right, right. What, what has been the key to your growth? So from going from six to, to 25 to 50, I, I think it's the hustle. It's that, the it's the hunger and the hustle. It's that constant, um, there's a, there's something in your gut, 
you know, that just keeps you going. And you know you have a message to get out there to people. And it just keeps you motivated and going, going, going. So I kind of walk, talk, live, breathe what I do, right? So if I'm going to a restaurant and I, I don't know, I, my kids get embarrassed when I do this, but I'm like, I'll say to the, the waiter or waitress, do you like what you're doing? Do you, do you really love what you're doing? And they'll say, well, you know, it pays the bills. I'm like, well, what would you really love to do if you could do it? You know? And they're like, oh mom, please. (laughs) But, um, but I think it's that hunger and hustle of just wanting to help people and, you know, wanting to help a bride have the most beautiful wedding that she can imagine, wanting a person to start a business and change their whole life, you know, their whole trajectory of their life. That's what's kept me going. And I think when you love what you do, you're passionate about it, you're serving and helping others, word is spread. Mm -hmm. People will start talking about it. And so most of my business now is word of mouth, Mm. which is where you want to get to. Now, my school, the reason why I love my school so much, the live school, is because it's hands-on. And they get to, you know, bustle the dress, cut the cake, taste the cake and champagne, um, you know, pin the boutonnieres on the the, uh, tuxedos. But... We've also filmed my school, and it's going to be available online. So that's another step. But I love that interaction, though, that human interaction. You know, when they laugh at my jokes and I'm able to give them a hug, that's my favorite part. Right. You know? It, it's yeah. so funny because I, I, I love that, too. But, you know, in today's day day and age where – entrepreneurship. I mean, it, it, everything can be online and you can reach so many more people. I have no doubt as you um, uh, release this online course, you could go easily from 1,200 students to 12,000 students. And and, and, yes. and that scalability. And like I said, you multiple streams of income. I mean, you've got so many different things going on. Uh, it's really, really impressive and, and something you're so passionate about. I always wonder though, you know, when you have moments, have you ever had a moment where you're like, I don't know. And, and you, you did this, you literally just jump in and you're like, I so confident. So someone listening to this might be like, you must have been so confident to say, I'll split 50% of my profit with you to, to start the school and start training people to take on that type of responsibility. But were you always that confident? Corey, I was scared to death. <laughs> it, it was more of a fake it till you make it kind of thing. I was really scared. I, I didn't know what I was doing. And I'm one of those people. It's more like a jump first, you know, type of person before you look. Um, no, I was scared to death. I, I didn't know what I was doing. I always tell my students, look, I made every mistake known to mankind. I am the walking example of what not to do. <laughs> so, you know, so, and I'm honest and upfront about it, <laughs> but it's true. It's like, I was kind of like, I kind of learned as I went, um, but I just did it. You know, I just went in and embraced it and thought, well, you know, I have to try. I have to at least try. And, you know, just also to being a single mom, right, to two kids, yeah. Yes. It, the other thing, the other side of that is you might have made every mistake in the book, but the one mistake you didn't make was you never gave up. And that's one thing, just getting to know you over the last few years, I just really, really appreciate about you. And I'm so impressed by you. I mean, everything that you're building, it, it's just phenomenal. So what would you say if you were to look back or what you tell even your students that is the biggest secret to your success as an entrepreneur? Oh, that's good. That's a good question. Um, that's a good question, Corey. <laughs> You're a good interviewer. I, you know, I think the secret is, well, I'm going to tell you what, having children was a big motivator for me because I 
literally everything I did was for them. Mm. And, you know, working as hard as I did, the hustle, the everyday grinding was to make sure they had food on the table, a roof over their heads, warm clothes, good education, and they were loved. And maybe that was the deep, deep secret that kept me going. And then above that was seeing, you know, my bride's faces radiate at the end of their weddings and them hugging me and my students' faces when the light goes on and they're like, oh, I could do this. This is something I can do. And that's what kept me going. So, you know, being a mom, a single mom at that, your world revolves around your kids. And now they're grown. Mm. My kids are uh, 25 and almost 27. So they're grown. But what keeps me going, now my clients are, and my students are the biggest um, reward that I could have in my business. You know, just making them happy. You know, it's funny, Ali. It's like I've always enjoyed our conversations through, you know, Facebook and and I always appreciate you listening to the podcast. But what you said right there is probably why I've I've been just uh have an affinity towards you because I think the big motivator is when you do something that's not just for yourself. Obviously you love wedding events, teaching people, but it's, yes. it's not just for you. It's, it's for your kids. It's for your brides, for your clients. I mean, literally you're just saying it all. And I'm always reminded of the time that I, I I've had many moments in life like that, but where I was sitting uh, on the top of my deck after I bought my dream beach house. And I just said, like, I wanted to share it with people. And I, I called everybody in my family. I called my girlfriend, my mom, my dad, my sisters, and nobody answered. And I was just like, Right. I don't get to share this with anybody. And then in my head, I realized like it doesn't mean as much if I don't have anybody to share with. And I had other experiences too, but that was one of those moments where it's like, all right, this is a big motivator for me to to share this experience and to share what I've learned so that I have you know, other people to do it with. You know, I enjoy doing what I do, but if I'm not doing it, if I'm doing it just for myself, it doesn't fulfill me. And I, I hear that right, from your right. story as well. Um, and, and kids, you know, I actually, I think about my future kids a lot, you know, I'm like, I want to, I want to do this so that like when, when I have kids, like this is the life that I can create for them. And, and it is something that I know it's kind of weird sometimes for, for other people, but something I think about because I hear stories like, yes, you, where like you know, I want to motivate and stay motivated and support my kids and everything. And just really, really impressive. So I always knew there was something about you that I, I love talking with you for. Um, <laughs> so, so Ali with. With everything that that you've accomplished, um, what would you say is is the number one piece of advice that you would give just people starting out? Yeah, starting out. I mean, you know, I'm a. I call my sis kind of an oxymoron, but I'm a a dreaming realist. If that makes sense, <laughs> it's an oxymoron, though. Um, I. I, I do believe anything's possible for people. I am a big believer that whatever they can dream about, they can achieve it, right? But then I also believe that it has to be broken down into realistic goals and steps that they can take every day to work on that dream. And, you know, do that one-year plan, five-year plan, 10 year plan and then chunk it down to steps. And, you know, also too, we could get sidetracked. We get like shiny object syndrome mm -hmm. where it's like, Oh, I think I might want to do that though. Oh, I think I might want to do that though. Staying focused is the key. You know, I mastered weddings. Well, kind of it's, you know, weddings are still <laughs> a challenge because, you never know what could happen. But I feel like I could do weddings with my eyes closed, right? So I then I went into the teaching mode. And now I'm going, you know, venturing out into the online courses and the the book mode. But I but it's all kind of related, true, too, right? So 
I think though staying focused in the beginning, staying in your lane and mastering what you want to do, make that one-year goal, five-year goal, 10-year goal, and take those steps, those little steps that are going to seem tedious and uneventful and boring, but that are major into getting where they want to be. I, I absolutely love that and couldn't agree more. Um, just staying focused and, and becoming an expert in in, some, in one thing yes. before trying to go out and do everything. And especially yes. when you're starting out, that is so important. Ali, thank you so much for coming on this show. Um, but I want to make sure everybody can find you and connect with you. Where's the best place to reach out to you online? Okay, online, website, Weddings by Ali, A-L-L-I-E, LLC.com. And I'm on every social media site as Weddings by Ali. Okay. So they can find me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, and TikTok. Nice. <laughs> wow. You're on TikTok? I, yeah. I, we talked about this. I'm on TikTok too. I just yes. started. I'm horrible at it, but it's it's kind of fun. It's a it's fun and it's addictive. Yeah, too. yeah. Well, that's what the social media <laughs> tries to get you in. Um, that's it. Again, Allie, thank you so much. For you, after achieving so much success, I'm so excited for you and everything you've got planned. But in 2020 and, and beyond, what is your next level of success? Well, I'm hoping, well, not hoping, I will get that book published, printed, sold, and I'm kind of hoping, I mean, even with my raspy voice, that I would get some speaking gigs from the from the book um, so I could share and spread my message to, you know, upcoming entrepreneurs, um, brides, whoever, and then my online course, Reaching More People, you know, to start that business. That's incredible. And even though you had the problem with your voice, I, I'm inspired listening to you. And I'm sure other people will as well. Ali, thank you so much for coming on Unleash Success. Corey, it was such an honor. Thank you so much for having me. If you enjoyed the show and learned something of value, the one ask that I have is please go subscribe, whether you're on iTunes, Spotify, or YouTube. And if you leave us a five-star rating or review, that absolutely helps us get our message out there. Each week, I'm going to continue to interview amazing people, and we're going to break down their tools and strategies to help get you real results. Feel free to visit the website, unleashedsuccess.com, and subscribe to our newsletter so you get updates each week. And remember, knowing is not enough. Knowledge alone is not power. Action is. Because action is the only way you're going to get the results you want in life and truly live the life of your dreams. So take some action, subscribe to the podcast today, and get ready to unleash success in you.